Hey folks, what's going on? It's Mike here and welcome to this lesson on debugging. In this lesson, I'm going to be teaching you how to detect memory leaks specifically on the Mac operating system. Now, many of you have seen my series and some of my other tutorials where I use tools like Valgren and GDB, but folks have been also asking for how do I debug or detect some of these errors on Mac? Well, there's a great tool. It's called the leaks tool. It's for leak detection as far as finding memory leaks on the Mac system. So I want to go ahead and show you how to use this tool so that you can write better and safer software. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at an introduction to finding memory leaks on Mac. All right, so in this lesson, I want to go ahead and start by showing us how to detect a memory leak on Mac. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just open up a sample program that's relatively simple here. It's just got a main and a for loop here. And you'll notice in this for loop, I'm allocating some memory. So whatever argument I pass in when I run the program, that's how many times this loop will be run. And each time I run, I will allocate an integer. And then I will conveniently forget how to uh, reclaim that memory by deleting it. So that's going to cause a memory leak. OK, so let's go ahead and just compile this program. Clang++ or G++ will work just fine. I'm going to use dash G just to give debug symbols. It's always nice to get debugging information memory leak and the program and it compiles. So if I run it uh, and it's going to error if I don't provide an argument, but I just want to show you segmentation fault here because this is sort of a uh, weird behavior. So we do have to provide how many times that loop's going to run. And of course, when we run, it's going to look like it is just working fine. We wouldn't know. We have no suspicion that there's any memory leak if we're just a user of this program. But we know better as programmers here that we need to free memory within the block that it's alloc allocated or otherwise sometimes uh, within its lifetime. OK, so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is let me go ahead and close this program here in this window and show you the leaks tool. Now, here's how to run the tool. And leaks can be used on running processes. So we can run leaks and then a process ID, which you would use by just grabbing some ID, just using something like uh, PS, OUX, for instance. And this would give you all the uh, process IDs of running processes. Uh, but this is probably the use case for most folks, I think, watching this who just want to run a simple program or, as you're learning something, debug and see if you have any memory leaks, uh, where leaks basically just gives you a report of the program at the exit. OK, and you can go ahead and read more about this here. OK, so uh, that's the idea. And then after the dash dash, you run your normal program. OK, and there's other powerful things that you can do uh, for leaks, but we're going to stick to the basics here just so you have something that can work. All right, so leaks at exit dash dash and then our program and then any arguments that we want. OK, so again, if we run it, well, what do we get here? And let me go ahead and scroll up. And we'll go ahead and see this is where we started. I'm going to go ahead and ignore these uh, security restrictions here um, because really we just want a report of was there a memory leak here. OK, so you got some other uh, information about uh, the actual executable when we ran it, et cetera, et cetera. But really what we care about is this report here. And it detected that we had, well, three leaks here. Why? Well, remember in our program here, uh, the argument that I specify, so four, is how many times that loop's running and how many times it's allocating memory. In fact, let's go ahead and just keep that uh, near us so we can remember uh, this is what's causing the memory leak. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this again, maybe six times, and you can see this uh, list is getting bigger. Now, some interesting things that we can do with leaks, again, just to look at some of the options. And again, um, it's probably easier if I um, uh, rotate this for you uh, so you can actually read things is to look at some of these options here. And there is a nice option here uh, that sort of uh, lists things out um, that we're going to use here. Uh, or you can group things together. So you might want to play around with some of these options uh, as we go here. Um, but let me go ahead and close this. I'll rerun leaks here. Uh, but I'm going to add that list uh, option here to see if it gives us anything uh, more useful. Um, and, it, and it does kind of give us a new report down here. But what I'm really missing is where was that memory leak? Um, you know, it's sort of nice that it tells us something about a zone, how many leaks there were in sort of this report here. But you want to know uh, how exactly did we get uh, the error. So what we can do is enable uh, malloc stack logging. And this is essentially an environment variable that if we turn on when we run our program, so I'm just going to run the program itself, you're going to notice there's a bunch of other information that has been logged here. 
okay? Some different stack logs and debug information that's captured here. Uh, but what that's gonna do is actually help our report for the leaks tool. So if I go ahead and run it this time, uh, again, with the same options, I'm gonna use list because it makes things a little bit nicer. And let's just create three memory leaks here. So that's what I'll run here, enter. And our output is quite different. We're getting a whole bunch of other stuff here from different libraries, all sorts of information because, well, we're uh, monitoring the sort of malics that occur. But if you go to our leaks report here towards the top, you'll actually see our one, two, and uh, three leaks here. And interestingly enough, if you go ahead and look in the sort of call stack and sort of from the start of our program, somewhere in our main, we have this uh, memory leak. And it detects it at, well, the file, since we compiled with the debug symbol, so we have this information, and at line six. So let's go ahead and open up our file. Let's go ahead and uh, just highlight this here. And in fact, at line six, that is where our error is. Okay, so this is just a little introduction to the leaks tool. It's super useful and it's sort of analogous to Valgren on Linux, which maybe you've seen me uh, use or other folks use or have otherwise been introduced to it. But again, it's a super handy tool and I think it's useful to know. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that lesson and it's gonna be useful for you for debugging and writing better software on Mac, whether you're doing this for iOS development or just regular development. Now you can play around with this tool on different languages and so on and still get the same result. So it's a really nice tool and the Mac diagnostic tools themselves are actually quite good. So add this tool to your arsenal and especially if you're doing cross-platform development across Linux, Windows, and Mac and so on, now you have a way to do some debugging on Mac and again, write better software. So if you enjoyed this lesson, if you found out that it was useful to you in some way, please go ahead and like and subscribe. And if you have a question that wasn't answered in this video, go ahead and comment below so we can go ahead and continue the discussion. All right, folks, thanks for your time and we'll see you next time.